this is the second segment on lecture three for the course ME 760 at the University of Waterloo. We're going to address in this section an overview of mobile source emissions inventory mostly related to MOVES, the US EPA mobile source emissions inventory application. We're going to explain what are the emissions process when we are analyzing mobile sources. What are the pollutants? What are the fleet analysis, including the vehicle categories, if it is a car, a truck, a bus, and the fuel types? We will then cover databases, which MOVES use, and it's necessary to have a little bit of comprehension, especially if we need to modify it for different jurisdiction or different countries. And we will mention the calculation types, basically, is it an inventory type or just emissions rates type calculation. MOVE stands for Model Vehicle Emission Simulator, a very advanced model to compute mobile sources for on-road vehicles. Typical applications in the United States for state implementation plans, and the Clean Air Act requires con transportation conformity, meaning roads also must meet the Clean Air Amendments of 1990. And these are demands that roads will behave in terms of regulatory evaluations as if they were factories, meaning cannot exceed air quality standards. On the emissions, emissions processes, how we compute the emissions. We have running emissions, such as on a road, could be smooth running, no interruption, car is traveling on an uncongested road, for example. And we also have interrupted running, and this would be downtown in any city where you have stoplights. When you start your vehicle, the engine is cold, and because of that, a lot of the fuel molecules will not burn completely to CO2 and water. A lot of incomplete combustion products, which are toxics, will be emitted. We also talk about and analyze extended idle. Could be a car idle, but most frequently trucks and buses. Operative emissions related to fuel having the ability to evaporate and oils having the ability to evaporate. Refueling. Let's say your jurisdiction does not have vapor capture refilling your car. Gasoline goes into the tank, for example. It's empty but full of gasoline vapors. As the liquid goes in, it pushes vapors out. And that then goes to the atmosphere. We must account for that. Crankcase emissions. This is basically the engine. Just consider it as the engine. The oil that we need to lubricate gets really hot. So it also will generate vapors. Some of those vapors will escape. We call those crankcase emissions. And tire wear. Your tire, although it takes a long time to wear out, as you drive it emits a little bit of particles. But if you account for the thousands and thousands of cars on the road that builds up to some significant numbers. As you brake, the brake pad will also emit particles to the atmosphere. We also account for that. Pollutants, we have the hydrocarbon HC, we have carbon monoxide, CO, have NOx, NH3, and SO2. Let me talk about the HC, the hydrocarbons. There are many ways to cut and slice and report and use the information from hydrocarbons that are emitted to the atmosphere. The one I focus mostly, especially on our course, is breaking it down into volatile organic compound specific components. Example, you fill up your tank, the gasoline vapors will be composed of benzene, toluene, xylene, heptanes, octanes, etc. So we break it down those constituents. That's how we're going to handle HC. We account for greenhouse gases and we have CO2, CH4, and 2O. CH4 per ton emitted, we need to multiply that by 21 to get the equivalent in CO2. We call that the global warming potential. CH4, methane is 21, N2O is 310, so it has a high global warming potential. We also evaluate more than 50 different VOC compounds. The few, the most used ones are gasoline, then diesel, then ethanol, we also have compressed natural gas and liquefied petroleum gas. This is the butane and propane tanks. And you can see on the 
right hand side the table contains information on cars and we can have different breakdown for passenger cars we have different breakdown for buses etc when you get moves it already contains database for all the united states and most of the counties in the united states if you are going to use that internationally we need to modify those databases if you're in the United States, you can use those, but you can also improve on those at a county level, for example. When you run moves, you need to create your own input file. How moves should run, it's called a run spec in moves lingo. And the input database, they can be at county level, project scale levels, we have national levels. You don't have to worry about moves if you are using default modes. These databases are well-defined, lots of extensive measurements, and once Moves runs, it will save all the output into its own database. And here how it works. We have the run spec, the input file for Moves, the input data set, you go through the Moves GUI, it is developed in Java, and you process that, and it will generate the output. Then you post-process the output for many uses. There's another way to see detailed information on the database within moves. We have the emission rates databases for each vehicle category, local map data, for example, if you're in a jurisdiction that has a lot of sunshine and it is warm, Texas as an example, will have more evaporative losses than if you are in Canada. And also local fuel, we know that different jurisdictions will have different fuels. And even if everything comes from the same refinery, you could have places that use more corn ethanol. So we need that data. At national scale, we will have fleet and activity, and this is average vehicle miles travel or vehicle kilometers travel. Activity is basically driving cycles plus the T's. County scale, fleet activity, project scale, much smaller roadways, planning for new roadways is an example of project scale. Adapting moves to other countries have tier one way of doing things. Use the county data manager. It's a tool within moves. And then you could modify to adjust. This is the quickest way to adjust moves to work. For example, in Kuwait, enter local activity, local VMTs, and the fleet distribution. Fuels in a different country may be different. Including other databases with moves, specific emission standards. Let's say California likes to change their emission standards more often than other places. Someone in California can quickly adjust this to a new uh, way of processing this in moves. I have to remind you that I used the example of California, but California has its own emissions model for mobile sources and it's called MFAC. Local technologies and local standards, limits that is imposed, new types of combustion or new catalysts. MySQL is a database management system. It is open source and is used within Moves. It gives the most flexibility because Moves runs entirely by reading information directly from MySQL, processing, putting it back in MySQL. We have new vehicle classes, new road types, and new driving patterns. I will not go through this. Suffice to say that the files we need and the run spec we create, provide that to moves. The input database, just select what you're using and the moves will create its own output database. You can use moves to get emission rates only or a full inventory. The inventory type calculation, moves will provide results in terms of units of mass, grams, kilogram, pounds, tons, etc. It will process the result by getting the emission rates and the activity. We already know what activity is, vehicle miles travel, and it can include a uh, driving cycle. Emissions inventory type calculations includes getting a total mass. And how do you do that? I want you to focus on the activity factor multiplied by the emission rates and then we get the total mass for emissions for each one of the components indicated here component i emission rate i the other type calculations we do moves emission rate type calculations and then it will provide emission rates per mile or per vehicle we then must post process these results by doing the same thing i presented before emission rates by vehicle activity 
emission rates, we get sources, age groups, we get operating modes, and we can then establish our emission rates. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me.